Good morning, grade six students. Welcome to your first ever grade six uh, home-based learning video. It's been a long time since I've seen you. I've missed you. You guys should uh, come and uh, ask me some questions or something. We will be having our home-based learning virtual meetings soon online. Make sure you know those dates and you get to them. Today we are um, basically reviewing some of the things that you read in a short video. You'll have another video you get to watch as part of this lesson, but uh, this will be short. We're going to be reviewing um, the formation of the Republic. Last quarter, we focused on how the governments were formed and how they had influence in ancient Greece and how society and culture and things like that was all um, wrapped in and tied to how the government was functioning and what type of government. And so now we're focusing on ancient Rome, a continuation of the story for the most part, but we want to start a little bit farther back and begin at the roots and then see it expand into what most of the world remembers it as. Um, this is the home-based learning, slide one. The beginning, so you'll need to take your notes out, start uh, reviewing or checking with these, but uh, the beginnings, it started as a trading city. Ancient Rome, it was between these two colonies, uh, Greek colonies in the south and the Etruscans in the north. The Etruscans were, seemed pretty smart, they had good ideas, a lot of people and trading went through Rome. It was a city on seven hills, and so it became this place almost like a melting pot of ideas. People from different lands would come, share their ideas. Um, they started, it was trading that um, that brought people there, and then it kept people there. So the, the Greek colonies in the south um, had ideas of democracy, things like that. The Etruscans had strong leadership, and so they started stealing ideas from them. Uh, they began by allowing almost anyone to be a citizen. This is big. In this time, anybody allowed to be a citizen of your city is huge. Um, it's almost like letting the kids decide what is for homework, right? You don't hear about that often in schools, but that's what it would be like at the time, something out of this world. Um, the Etruscans um, were very developed. We don't actually know that much about them. We know that um, a lot about, or what we do know about them usually comes from what we know about the Romans. And so they um, they had a strong um, ruling power of kings. They had um, ideas of government. They also brought things like language, the alphabet, um, religion, things like that to the Romans. They also brought the idea of gladiators and um, those kinds of things. It all came from the north, the Etruscans. And so these things that we remember, right, the romantic languages, the alphabet, those kinds of things, those all come from the Rome, or the Etruscans who um, the Romans stole them from. So soon the kings and the people in the military grew to the city began. Um, it grew, a lot of trading, stability, right? We know what that's like. We saw that in the golden age of Athens. When you're strong leadership, right, economic stability and a strong army, okay, it starts to lead to growth. And so the kings and from the north, the Etruscans, and with the trading, it became a powerful city. The influence began to grow and it became a city of refuge for, for bad guys. And so a lot of people would come to Rome to get away from their past, things like that. And so with the, uh, the ability to get a citizenship easily, it it was really um, just a place to be and soon grew an influence. And so during this time, the beginning, they started to grow, uh, build temples. There's a one up there that you can see. And sewer systems. At first, right there, you guys, you know, you flush your toilet and it goes away. For a long time, there was no such thing as a toilet or a system in which to take away all of your your unwanted bodily waste out from your house or away from your town. And so this is actually revolutionary. It caught, it kept down a lot of diseases. Um, I brought order. There's a system to um, the way the cities are built, very organized. And so we see this as being um, just, a, a, just a sign of the times that are going to come through organization, things like that. Um, the Romans, okay, they started off with having seven kings. Um, these usually were from the Etruscans. Okay, these, these kings ruled just like any other tyrant uh, we studied in the past, helped grow the city under a firm leadership. And then in the year 15 or 509 BC, some of the people got sick of the Etruscans. Okay, um, basically it was a rebellion. They're sick of having um, people who weren't even Romans ruling over them. 
even though they did benefit them a lot. We're not going to get into that. And so they killed them off. And the last king was killed. There was never to be a king, but there would be more dictators and rulers later. You know that. Um, beginnings, the sick of the leaders established the first republic. Now, we have studied what a tyrant is, an oligarchy and a democracy. And now we're going to look at the republic and how that is different from all of them. Um, so this is known as the separation of power. So there is power within a republic given to different bodies. And so it started and lasted for almost 500 years. That's pretty good. But it started as um, two powers. There's the uh, the Senate. Okay. The Senate was made of a body of nobles, rich guys, people who had a lot of power. And so there was um, a body. They were called the Senate. They would vote. They would make laws. They would do a lot of it. And they were called patricians. Okay, these are made up of patricians. Then from this Senate body, they would elect two people to be chief or to be the magistrate. So almost like the chief magistrate in ancient Rome or ancient Greece, there would be two people who were put in power and they were like the presidents. Okay, they were the ones who were um, signing things into order. The Senate, they were overseeing it all. Um, these magistrates were elected for one year. Okay, and then after they were elected, they were returned back to the Senate where they had to do 10 years of just regular senating, and then they could be up for to be elected to magistrate again. The lower class, these people were called the plebes. I That's how I call I don't know how they're actually said, the plebeius. Um, these were peasants. They were um, the farmers, the people who um, made up the army. They were also the people who kept the economy going. Um, very, you know, there's, there's just a lot of them because not everybody's rich. And so there's two, there's just a structure of the Senate is made out of the patricians and the rich people. They are ruling over the lower class. The plebes made up the army. Over time, okay, the plebes didn't really have much um, power. They, I don't think they had any. And then they began to um, demand more of a role in government. And so we see um as the Senate was like, oh, we don't want an uprising, we'll let them do this. We'll let them do a little thing here or there. We'll let them take out the garbage. We'll let them choose what kind of lunch they want to have. We'll let them do these kinds of things. Well, not actually lunch or take out the garbage, but different things in society that didn't have to be done by the Senate. So they gave them those little roles. And then little by little, as time went on, this body of the plebes began to grow and they had more and more power um to sit making laws for the people that for themselves i guess for who they were living under and so we see this um after a while the plebes then were given the right to veto so the plebes had a larger assembly to allow the senate and the chief magistrate to know if the people disagree so the chief magistrate the senate they would be making laws they'd be passing these things to uh, put into place for the um Lydia just showed up. Can you hear her? You better hurry. Oh. You gotta come here. Come here, Lydia. Oh, there she is. Say hi to the class. Okay. No, mom. Um, uh, so the, the plebs, okay, with this veto, they could say, you know what, your law, it's not working for us. We veto. Try again. And so this was a huge amount of power given to the police, which they've never had before. This is like the kids deciding what kind of assignments they get to do, what dates to come to school. Right. This is unheard of at the time. However, it really began to balance power. Right. Instead of it just being the rich people and the senates at the top. Now, the regular people had as much influence and say into what they wanted to be as law. So the veto gave the people a voice and influence in the republic, which is huge. Um, there was a form of dictatorship. So the word dictatorship, which we often give to people like Adolf Hitler, Joseph Stalin, Kim Jong-un, okay, this word came out of the republic, okay? I want you to think of it as a tyrant. So during a war or some kind of emergency, the role of dictator would be given to, and usually it's given to a general, someone who's in charge of the army because it was usually an emergency. Somebody's going to come here and chop off all our heads and take all our stuff. So the dictator would be, it would be given, the role of dictatorship would be given to someone to run the country for six months. 
okay? It was just a one-man rule. It was like a king take over, run this country, make decisions quickly, fast, get our soldiers where they need to be, get resources where they need to be, keep us safe for six months. After six months, hand the power back to the people, and you step down from your role as dictator, let everybody else work as they were before in the form of government, the Senate, the Council, the Magistrates. So that is something unique. It started out with something really good. Um, there's different places where we see this throughout history. Um, however, it doesn't always go as planned. Um, you might be thinking, why did the um, why did the why were there two presidents? Why would they elect two people to be the magistrates every single year and then have another two the next year another? Wouldn't it be easier if it was just one person in charge, just like in Greece? Well, that um that was something they thought about, I'm sure. But what ended up being the roles was there's usually one who is in charge of the army and so would be going with the army around and conquering and bringing resources and more land to the republic, and with the other one being the leader at home in Rome, while the armies are gone, bringing stability and leadership and helping construct ideas and laws. And basically, it's like when your mom's at work or your dad's at work, your mom's running the house. One's growing the company, the business, making money for you while the other one's running the house, okay? Keeping everyone safe at home and fed and happy. And so two, this two president system or two magistrate system was also a um, very key in the expansion and the ability for Rome to continue to grow. Because remember, Alexander the Great, he left for 10 years and actually didn't return, right? He expanded the country beyond um, anyone's wildest dreams, but then there's nobody back home contributing to um, keeping it stable, um, growing the, the laws and the, and the society at home. And so this way, um, they really got around that. So, for you to hand back in to me to uh, in manage back for this week's home based learning week three, please answer these two things, these two questions. Those are the four parts of a republic. Explain how a republic is different from a democracy, and then submit it to manage back. Say hi to me. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel if you want. You might see more of Lydia in there. Um, but then there will be another video for you to watch about. Um, military inventions.